Books. A new book explores how parents' anxiety can affect their children's well-being. Nearly one in three adults and one in three children aged 13 to 18 will experience an anxiety disorder over the course of their lifetime. Psychologist Madeline Levine is the author of I love this title, Ready or Not, Preparing Our Kids to Thrive in an Uncertain and Rapidly Changing World. She says the need to protect your kids from discomfort is setting future generations up to fail. And Madeline Levine joins us at the table. Madeline, you know, it's such as a parent, it's such a natural instinct. I want to protect you. I want to make sure you're okay. And right. you say, that is not so good. So there's a whole different kinds of protection. If a car's coming at your kid, yes. you want to protect them. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is protect them from the normal things that happen in life, because how do we get prepared for challenge? Life is challenging. Yeah. Just spoke to 500 people, asked, is anybody in the audience never had a broken heart? Yeah. One person raised their hand. Wow. You will have a broken heart. You will have challenge in life. And in order to be able to not fall apart with that. So we just let them fail? We just let them? You, you let them fail at the normal developmental things. things. The kid wants to go away to camp and he's scared. He's supposed to be yeah. scared. It's yeah, a yeah, first yeah. experience yeah. on a bike. He's yeah. supposed to be a little nervous. It's a first experience. How do you get better in anything? You master the fear. Yeah. yeah right. You talk a lot about anxiety, mm -hmm. anxiety between the parents and the children. Right, right. So we know, first of all, 30% of anxiety disorders is genetic. Uh, oh, really? It's genetic. Wow. That surprises me. I yeah. didn't realize that. Yeah. Me too. Well, it depends. 30 to 40 depends which Madeline, you're, you're looking at. at us like, of course it is. <laughs> I, I have never heard <laughs> that. I have not heard that yeah. either. Really? 30 yeah. to 40. So there's this whole science, epigenetics, it's where genetics and the environment intersect mm -hmm. and turn on something. So you probably have a gene somewhere in you. Somebody in your family mm -hmm. might have been anxious or depressed or something like that. Does that gene turn on or not? And that depends in part on the environment. So you put a kid in a really stressful environment. I have one kid from a colleague who um, is taking calculus in high school. Mm -hmm. Father is graphing every single test this young man gets. Oh. He's taking calculus. Well, that's not The good. kid has trichotillomania. He's pulling out his hair. He's pulling out his eyelashes. Yeah. He's pulling out his eyebrows. And the dad says he'll stop when he finishes calculus. Mm. No, he won't. That's the way he learned to deal with anxiety. You believe that we can get back to a place where, where, di where anxiety isn't as prevalent a diagnosis as it's become? So when I wrote, I wrote a book called The Price of Privilege 12 years ago, anxiety disorders hit one in five. Now anxiety disorders are hitting one in three. What what happened? I yeah. mean, genetics don't change in 12 years. Something has happened in the environment, and I think it's because it's incredibly uncertain. People don't know how to deal with it. They're very anxious. We've got social media, which is constant comparison. We've got pressure on kids. The number one anxiety-provoking thing for a child is school. It used to I be. I believe that. Yeah, it used I to believe be that. parents. I want to go to the title, the second line of your book, Preparing Our Kids to Thrive in an Uncertain and Rapidly Changing World. So. Madeline Levine, Dr. Madeline Levine, yes. how, do you, how do we do that? To prepare them? How do yeah. we prepare them? Yes. Um, I think we do a couple things. We're willing, we love them, obviously. You know, we that's know a, that, that's that, a given. that love ahead. and limits yeah. are really good for kids. Mm -hmm. I think we start encouraging things that prepare them for an uncertain future. That would be something like risk tolerance. So you have a kid and you're nervous about having him go around the block, right, on his bike, because who yes. knows, it yes. might be somebody in the bushes. Yeah. You have to tolerate your own anxiety and let the kid manage it if he's eight or nine or 10 years old. So you allow situations and encourage and challenge What about your older kid. kids? We get it as a little kid on a bike. What about older kids? What about older kids? So Teenagers, what, young adults. Yes. What, what you're trying to do is get them to make, understand the calculus, the difference between drinking and driving, which is a bad risk, mm -hmm. and um, trying out for the lead in the school play. You yeah. want them to have those kinds of experiences that are challenging. There's a fabulous experiment where you take two groups of kids and you um, tell one group how incredibly smart and talented they are and you don't tell the other group anything. Mm -hmm. Who does better? It's the group that you don't tell anything to because uh, they don't have all the pressure of living up to living standards. Up to right, right. Matt. And also it depends on your... Uh, what you talk about. Right. People say, well, we're not talking about metrics and good jobs and good schools anymore. And then you go to the dinner table and they're talking about 
bonuses and who has a Tesla. Yeah, Same you, thing. You said an environment. Madeline Levine, thank you so much. My pleasure. Ready or Not is on sale wherever books are sold.